Um, so we got some feedback. Uh, the first feedback, uh, do you want to hear from Jamie or do you want to hear some from the three randos first? Ooh, yeah, Let, that's a tough one. Let's do the randos. Okay, sure. Save the best for last. Right. Okay. Uh, for this one starts out, dear PNV, Tim has mentioned he plays golf and I have a golf question for him. Okay. Does he bring an extra pair of socks when he goes golfing? You know, just in case he gets a hole in one. Oh! <laughs> is that a is that one from uh, from Chris? He continues. I thought you guys would appreciate this joke. Thanks, Scott. Okay. <laughs> no, that was great, Scott. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. All right, dig it. Okay. <laughs> he was right. We did. We did. Uh, PNV. You guys have talked about food and drink at gigs, and I don't think you've ever talked about say, staying hydrated at your gigs or the day after. Do you have a go-to hydration regimen? Or a favorite bottle of water during your shows. Mm, heavy on the sparkling. For yes, me. cool. Mm, yes, <laughs> my hydration comes off the ice that melts in my glass. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, oh, you got to stay hydrated before and after shows, and hydrated, partially hydrated sure. too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I, I don't have any tricks. I, I mean, I just. You know, well, I, I do know that as we've gotten older, hangovers get a whole lot worse. That is so. true. They okay. last a day or two instead yeah. of a few hours. I mean, for me, this makes me think of like, what would my rider be if I was an artist and I had, you know, I must have these things on a table in the back in the green room for me. Yeah, the red M and M separated from the orange. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it would be that extreme. <laughs> I don't know, Bacon. Mm. I think I would like Fiji water. I like okay. Fiji water. Is it the bottle shape in your hand? What is it? <laughs> Not it's only that. Water. Can it you guys t- really taste the difference? In Fiji, yeah, I can. Right, that's what I'm saying. Really? I, I can taste Can it. you, Brian? I can't tell you what Fiji water tastes like other yeah. than water. It tastes I don't like know. Fiji water. Oh, it's a bit smoother going down. Is it? It's but there's like really that, that much of a difference between yeah, that and, say, so. Evian or Deer Park or whatever. Evian and like Deer Park, all that, that all tastes to me like I'm drinking filtered water out of the tap. As compared to like Fiji, it actually tastes like water from the goddesses of the <laughs> oh, see, of the, of the see when I was a kid of the I, Fijis I, indeed. <laughs> when I was a kid, I drank out of the hose. Yeah, me too. so like I didn't, yeah. you know, like to me, water is water. I, I'm sure all of it's tainted in one way or another. I just, you know, it all tastes the same. I don't know. I think the only one that I could say truly has a taste that separates itself from others is Dasani, and it tastes terrible to me. I don't hmm. know. Did you know Evian spelled backward is naive? Is it? <laughs> I was going to fall for that one. <laughs> <laughs> that <another> one? <laughs> <laughs> Other things I would have on my rider, chocolate candy. Oh, there'd be M&M's or like a Snickers. Only or pink a Hershey bars. Only pink? Only pink. Mm-hmm. Maybe okay. red. Really? You know. Maybe red? Oh, uh, see, I'm, I'm an orange and um, yellow. Really? Yeah. I've never met one of you before. Oh, thanks. Is Hi. The How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Did you say Skittles? <laughs> or which one? Skittles oh, Starburst. 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 Oh, Starburst. Yeah. All Skittles taste the same. Mm, I think we that. need to test that out. Yeah. I've okay. heard we that should. and we gummy bears. Data. I heard gummy bears all taste the same. No. Those definitely do. Mm-mm. They all like seep into like the, the flavor from each one seeps into the other one. There's no like membrane. Like a Skittle has like a, a hard shell mm-hmm. that you like can't get through, you know? So it like protects the cherry from like the lemon ones. Interesting. <laughs> you know, but gummy <laughs> bears, it's just a permeable membrane. I don't know. I mean, I, I will look at the color because I love especially Haribo gummy bears. And I'll look at the color before I eat it and taste something different every time I. Haribo gold mm. bears. Oh my God, I didn't know where that was coming from. <laughs> <laughs> you turned your head that way and I was like, nobody's talking. <laughs> okay. Uh, another one we got. This one didn't start off with a salutation at all. It's just like, it just literally just says, the silence after Bacon made his Migo tequila joke was a deafening. <laughs> that was funny. After the fact, when I was listening yeah. back, when we caught it, yeah. So here's that in case the folks didn't hit it. Start with a, a cheers. It would yeah. not. So what? What is this, Brian? Miko. All mm-hmm. right. So this is a new a new tequila to the team. We're gonna we're gonna give it a taste. All right. Cheers, Let's guys. See. So once I drink it, it's gonna be me left. <laughs> 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 Absolute sucks. See, that was one of the two. There's another moment shortly after that that you just bombed. <laughs> it's so weird. I'm not used to that. Are you guys doing the thing to me that we were doing to Brian? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not smart enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't I, believe that. I have to second. remind Brian of things. He's the same one. It's like, oh, 
what's the first word? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so Just you really think I could, I, I could get that with him? Come on. See, see, I thought that after you're saying it's the Migo tequila, right? That after you're done drinking, it was, it became me stop. Oh, yeah. Tequila. That's <laughs> what I thought. Uh, that see, that would have been better, know, Bacon. That, yeah. Taking uh, notes yeah, from, our, from our guest. All right. Yes. I'm here to help. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, Jamie. Jamie's back. Yes. Dear wow. Brian. And it's directed to me. It says, Dear Brian, Tim, and Bacon. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> Brian was getting excited over there. BTB. Your interview with Shelly Starr was out of this world. Parentheses, ha ha. But it was really great, and I really liked the bonus episode. One thing I have to reach out about was the very incorrect way that Bacon mentioned the Sierra Mist, Sierra Starry name change. Mm. Uh, Bacon said that uh, Pepsi lost the patent to Sierra Mist. The term he was looking for was trademark. Also, yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Those also, are very different. <laughs> it's spot on. God bless. Oh. Also, she continues. <laughs> oh, also. But wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait. <laughs> oh. uh, that Sierra, and that's Sierra with a C, uh, Mist with two S's. Uh, she's a spicy influencer. Uh, her story has not been corroborated by PepsiCo, and their Wikipedia page makes no mention of it. The yeah. real reason being mentioned is that Sierra Mist just plain failed to get market share from Sprite, so it was discontinued. Still oh. loving the podcast, Jamie. <laughs> is that why they <laughs> so, called it Sierra Mist? Because they couldn't hit? Oh, damn. <laughs> this is Podcast Envy. Well, what are we doing tonight? Are, are we doing uh, just a, a P&V episode? I feel like uh, there's some more energy in the room. Today we have another special guest on our, another installment of our interview series. He's a musician that plays in the DMV. He has a debut album titled When the Sky Began to Fall. He is Mr. New Covers Every Friday and New Originals Every Month. Please welcome Luke Roberts. Thank you. Thank you. No autographs, please. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Don't look me directly in the eyes. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Too late. Brian already gave you a pad of paper and a pen. I think that's what that was for, right? <laughs> Going to write down my deepest thoughts and feelings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or critiques. And then... So you've heard the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, Luke. We're really happy to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad um, to be here. If it's all right with you, we'll just dive right in and yeah. start just... I used to be a swimmer. Okay. Butterfly was my thing. So really? Wow. I, I dove in many a time. Nice. So you were the 4 a.m. kind of guy? No, that? no. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't that hardcore because that was the winter swimmers. I only did summer swimming. Oh, right. So that was like 8 a.m. was the earliest we were swimming, which meant 7.55 wake up and walk down to the pool. That's right. Oh, I okay. feel like this isn't official. I, I feel like this is like yeah. a neighborhood pool or maybe pool in the backyard situation. It was definitely a neighborhood pool, but we were pretty high up there in the neighborhood pool league thing. Oh, okay. Uh, the Prince Mont Swim League mm-hmm. for Prince George's County. There oh. you go. Does that ring a bell? With you? No, we yeah. were in Virginia. So, <laughs> okay. it's a, it's well, we were in Northern, we were in VSL, so Northern Virginia okay. Swim League. Oh, Got you it. also swim. I did. Oh, yeah. nice. Yes. What, what was your 50 fly time? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Uh-oh. Back to turn, I don't know. Back it was 4 a.m. Time. Everything's fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, uh, yeah, I did winter and a uh, summer swim. You're probably so. faster than me then. Yeah. What, what was your I don't like, know. I'm not as tall and lanky as you, so <laughs> I, I, I didn't do so well. Oh, I got beat by people that were shorter and smaller than me. Oh, I'm sorry. Not, not very much. Oh, okay. Obviously. Yeah. No, it's good. I mean, <laughs> um, no, actually a lot. But. <laughs> no, I love the, uh, the 50, 50 free. That God, was great. I hated freestyle. I loved it. I, see, I loved fly. It just that the feeling of like getting that wave going. Yeah, was awesome. And relays, relays were the best. Those were fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get amped up for that. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was more of a jackknife kind of guy. That's diving. Oh yeah. Brian. Oh, sorry. I thought yeah. we were just getting in pools. Or, oh, I mean, <laughs> no, <whatever>. in pools. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so where do we want to start? Bacon likes to it's ask. It's funny that he mentioned that because like usually getting beat by people that are smaller than me is my weekend activity. Hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to hold it together. <laughs> so Luke, where do you hail from? What, uh, where, where do you come from? Uh, are you from the DMV? Are you from Virginia? Maryland? Yeah. DC? I, I grew up in uh, Maryland in Laurel. Okay. Small oh, Laurel. town called Laurel. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I love Laurel. It's great. I've passed it on the highway many times. 
You what? I passed it on 95. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great spot. Uh, I love the little coffee shops there. So I still go back, actually, a fair amount. It's a good meeting place because it's kind of in the middle between me and all the Baltimore people now. Mm -hmm. So And it's got good coffee shops that are just fun to work at. And that used to be a huge thing of mine. I do it less now because I'm trying to save money, but I would go and, like, get a Cortado, get a mocha, something like that, and, like, sit and just work for, like, like six hours just sitting at this coffee shop. Nice. Yeah. And it was good, yeah. So, like, when did you move from Maryland to, to D.C.? Did you, like, spend high school and all that jazz through in Maryland? Yeah, I was in Maryland, um, in Laurel specifically, till I was about, well, I mean, I, moved, I went to UMBC for undergrad. I lived okay. on campus for four years, then I went to grad school. I was living with my parents for the first, like, two years of that. And then I lived with some buddies on campus, well, right off campus in a house for, like, another two years. And then I moved back in after I realized that I actually don't want to do what I was going to grad school for, mm -hmm. which was mechanical engineering and um, Ooh, getting, that's heavy. getting like a PhD type of thing Oof. in robotics, which is, you know, objectively cool, but yeah. also not what I found was making me come alive. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, you know, moved back to Laurel again. And then after I finally moved out and like figured out enough stuff, I, I was living in Ellicott City right downtown on Main Street, which was fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, I was like right above the, right across from um, Lapa Lapa. If you guys have been there, there's like this great Mexican restaurant. I was right above it on the third floor and I had like a balcony apartment. I could like go up on the roof and oversee the whole thing. It was great. It was awesome. Yeah. So, but now I live in, in DC uh, with my girlfriend. Nice. In Northeast. Okay. So when, as you were growing up in Maryland, did you find uh, music was something that kind of happened upon you or did you go seeking it out? Um, I grew up in a musical family. Okay. Uh, my dad played with a band, and so we were always doing like roadie stuff. And my older brother started to play guitar, which is what dad played. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, oh, crap, now I got to learn something. And so I picked the drums because it was the easiest thing because you just hit stuff. I didn't exactly. want to do all the complimented. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm just saying, I didn't want to do all the complicated yeah. fingerings, you know, all the piano. Calluses. And like, yeah. Yeah. I was like, man, guitar, how do you keep track of where all the notes are? Because mm -hmm. they're all different places. And you can, I mean, not that it's, I mean, obviously if you practice, you can learn anything. Sure. But that was my mindset as a five-year-old. I, mean, I think I started a little bit earlier, like three-ish, beating on like the Maxwell House coffee, there you coffee go. pots and pans. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, then it turned into uh, playing just more with my brothers. I started playing at church uh, when I was about 10 um because one of the drummers like just had to drop last minute my dad was like oh you should totally fill in and so i just learned the songs um you know tried to do that as quickly as possible and then they just you know had me play and it worked out nice they were happy with it so i just kind of kept doing it and they would call me all the time like last minute so i'd oftentimes learn the songs on the way to mm -hmm. um the gig in the morning you know on sunday mornings and then i you know, did all the youth group stuff and everything through uh, middle school and high school and Played for adult services throughout too, so did a lot of that uh, for a really long time until I was like early twenties, okay. something like that. Very so cool. Playing with my brothers, and then eventually uh, that didn't work out, and so then I took a break for a while. Released a couple of covers on YouTube, a couple of my own things, but wasn't really sure what I, what I wanted to do. And eventually, kind of started my solo thing. Okay, very cool. So, did you stick with drums, or did you move on to other instruments? Uh, moved on to well. I've always, I still play drums. I don't do it very much just because um, most of what I'm doing now is front man type stuff. So right. I'm like, you know, singing up front and trying to get people involved. It's hard to do from behind the kit. You know, you could do the Phil Collins things. I did that for a little while, but it wasn't, it just wasn't the kind of That's engagement that I wanted. Yeah. yeah. Like I wanted, it, I wanted it to feel like I'm creating, I want to create transcendent moments with people at these shows. And it's really hard to do that if you're not close to them. You know, or to invite them into something where there's literally a physical wall between you and them. Sure. And not that you can't do something awesome. It just wasn't what I wanted to do. And so I decided when I, when I came back to like doing things as a solo project, that's what I wanted to do. Um, and so, uh, and I, I write all my own songs. Like I've wrote, I've, um, well, I guess most of them, I've done a couple of like co writes. And um, the way I normally write stuff is on piano. Um, and that kind of was something that I just started learning like uh, seventh grade, something like that, just messing around on mm -hmm. my parents' piano in the house. So having a musical family, it's almost as if music called you. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that's probably more, more accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there any artist that, uh, as a, as a, as a kid or even as an adult 
that inspire you to create original music now? Yeah, there were a couple groups. Um, we were we were very religious as a family. We did the whole like Christian homeschool thing. I can relate to that. Um, oh, nice! That would be a good conversation for us at Amen. some point. Absolutely. Um, I have notes and notes. Nice. And notes, and um, notes, and <laughs> notes. Um, yeah. So there was obviously a lot of Christian music because most of what I was learning was worship music for Sunday morning in the church, mm-hmm. um, and that was very kind of niched into the like CCM con- Christian contemporary music uh, or Christian or contemporary Christian music, um, and so it was like Chris Tomlin, Hillsong. You know, DC Talk was like the edgy version. Michael W. Smith? Yeah, Michael W. Smith. But then my dad also had a very sort of limited set of other things, like Steve Winwood. Mm. So Back in the High Life was a big album that we really loved. Larry Carlton or Hiram Bullock were big uh, for me growing up. But when it came to like formative, uh, formative influences, most of that was high school, mainly like Hillsong, which is a lot of what we did at, um, at church, like this anthemic worship type of stuff that would take you into this sort of like trance, like, you know, sort of state, very meditative, you know, you're getting into this place with everybody. It's like a sacred experience trying to connect with God. Mm-hmm. And then um, we did some plays uh, in that youth group as well. We would like kind of sort of write our own like play. And the goal was to find a way to like share the gospel through this play, obviously, because we were evangelical. Of course. And so we did two versions of this. The main one was based around Coldplay songs. We would take like the Coldplay albums and kind of work them into a musical with skits and then the songs. It was called Socks. Um, and it was actually pretty cool overall, um, especially the music. And I really liked that stuff a lot. So I kind of, that became a big influence for me. And then we also kind of cherry picked Peter Gabriel's uh, In Your Eyes mm. and then Digging in the Dirt. Oh, I yeah. think those were the two kind of big ones. And In Your Eyes was like my favorite song for like years. And I still love that song. Yeah, man. Um, so those are, and, and all of his other stuff has become like a big influence for me as well. <clears throat> really bringing a lot of like the world beat, you know, kind of stuff. And just completely different genres together to create something that is like a celebratory, you know, sort of feeling of like, I don't know, like hopefulness and moving forward into something beautiful. I went to a uh, Christian evangelical uh, elementary school. Oh. And we had chapel. Uh, mandated Rhone? church service. Oh, good yeah. one. Yeah, right. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> that was uh, good. That was good. And for one, we were responsible for, uh, my class was responsible for doing a service at chapel, and, and our teacher was so creative and decided to take, con, you know, um, secular songs and turn them into Christian songs. Yeah. So It's even, so original. I mean, I've never heard of anybody else who's yeah, ever done that. It's crazy, right? <laughs> and so, like, I remember, um, this is so off topic, but uh, one of the, Amy Grant, was secular at the time and she had this one song baby baby anyway mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. we changed it to jesus jesus and oh, yeah. left, all the rest of the lyrics the same oh, dude. <laughs> not really basically yeah oh, dude. <laughs> it was like high school when we all realized man every every song that's a love song could also be a worship song right you know <laughs> all these things that you're describing they sound like some of them are pretty big productions and uh, so I was, I know, you know, some of the other projects that you're into, is that around the time that you started recognizing like the kind of the, the lighting and the staging and, you know, the tools that are being used? Um, or were you still just very much like drums and singing and, and keyboard? I uh, definitely saw like how all the pieces fit together. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it was so much of a conscious thing. It was more of like, when I, when I would try to create my own stuff, I wanted to replicate the feeling of being in that space. So like when I would write music, I would try to like get the lights all low and dramatic and stuff and have it dark and all that kind of thing. And like write, you know, putting myself kind of in that, you know, connection to whatever transcendent thing. Um, but it wasn't, I didn't really start doing a lot of like the lighting stuff until a lot later. Um, when I was working with my brothers to start like doing more, um, more, more stuff that was, you know, helping us stand out as a band. Uh, and that was okay. the first time I started to really like program some level of, of lights. Um, and most of that was just like mapping things inside of Ableton, which is a lot of what I'm doing now, which has been really fun. Uh, and I'm trying to really elevate that a lot because I think that's the easiest way to make yourself stand out apart from just having, you know, good songs and good performance and engaging the crowd 
is like having a light show. It's the presence. Yeah. Yeah. That like it at least is synced to the songs, even if it's something very, very simple. It doesn't have to be complicated or crazy. Just something that shows real intention mm -hmm. is so much better and will easily make your stuff stand out. So I have a little Ableton session and I have a DMX box such that it, it plugs in USB to my computer and I have a MIDI track that'll send commands to uh, the DMX, which then sends DMX commands out to my lighting fixtures. And so they can like, wow. you know, flash at the moments when the hits are happening, like, ba, ba, yeah. ba, da. Mm -hmm. you know, it'll like flash at the right times and everything. Yeah, there's a lot of places that we've played and I, I started picking up on it over time where they just kind of stick, stick you in the corner and mm -hmm. you're just kind of sub subjected to the lighting of the venue. Whether, oh, yeah. <laughs> whether, whether it's good or whether it's yeah. not so good. And so I, I haven't done anything as complex as you're describing, but I, I recognized at a certain point, I was like, we need to start bringing our own lights. Mm -hmm. You know, people need to know where the music is coming from. I'm tired of being in the corner, you know, in the dark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if your goal is to stand out and get fans, yeah. then it needs to be way more than Produced. people are seeing in, you know, their normal lives, what they would expect to see. They have to have this sort of wow factor. Mm -hmm. And that means going above and beyond in every way that you possibly can. So how long does it take for you to put together a show in its entirety? So I, I have like tracks and stuff that fill out some of the sounds like I can't pay people to, to play. Because when it's all my original music, we're not getting paid. We're, right. we're not playing you know, cover shows where we're getting paid, you know, maybe a grand or maybe more. So mm -hmm. I use the tracks and then I sync up all of the lights to that. So <clears throat> I'm really just rearranging a couple of songs for different shows. Um, and I'm not even doing that every single show. I want to make it a little bit different, a little bit new, you know, each time if I can. But a lot of it last year, especially, was like just trying new things mm -hmm. and seeing kind of what, what works. Finding that groove. Yeah. yeah. And now I've got like a set that I really like. I made some changes the last, uh, last gig at Jam and Java that we played on September 6th. And that worked really well. Mm -hmm. We basically added a new song at the end and put the old ending song at the beginning. And do you have, when you do these types of events, do you have like your whole box of goodies with t-shirts and hats and koozies and CDs or vinyls or whatever? Yeah. So I, I do have a merch box. Um, I went through a number of different types of merch. Uh, I have, so uh, I've got this sci-fi series for my album that I'm doing and there's this magic monocle in that, that like does cool stuff and it represents lots of cool, like symbolism and stuff. I have a t-shirt. I think the t-shirt design was not really that great. Um, it's just some of my album art and it's, it's got me on it. And I think that was a mistake. I'm like on the, um, I'm on, what is it on the boardwalk yep. at, um, in New Jersey. And there's like a cool sign that says something fun, fun Cade is what it says. I the love top. the fun Cade in New Jersey. I, I thought it was cool, but like nobody buys the t-shirts. The That's a shame. So I'm just, yeah, I just, well, now I want it is. one. Yeah. Well, you, you're welcome to have one. I, I should have brought awesome. some. And I'm you trying. want to go to the fun cave, too. I do. Yeah. Time. I it's want it all. Time. And so, I'll wear my monocle. All right. I'll see you. <laughs> my man. Yeah. So what, what I'm doing now is I'm actually, I, I've always made this uh, jewelry, like this stuff right here. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, like, I was looking at that, and I wasn't oh, sure sweet. exactly what the design uh, was that's cool to know that it's, uh, you it's actually that. your your mom. No. <laughs> wow, no. that was her and my dad intertwined doing it. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. That's the night I was conceived. You can see four legs right here. It's, a, it's an artistic picture. <laughs> Look at that. They're doing it. That's my yeah. dad's dong right that's there. Right. And this Good is actually Lord. this is actually you popping out right here. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the brilliance just coming that's out. Right. Oh. Love it. Mm -hmm. Is this your design? Your biggest seller? I've actually never made another one of this design. <laughs> My Brian, parents are just trapped around. I was going to say, thing. Brian's parents are thankful for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. They don't want to be known out in the world. <laughs> but people, people have actually asked for this design, so I've thought about, about doing that. I just haven't actually pulled the trigger on it yeah. uh, the way your parents did. <laughs> Dad specifically. I think that I think that pendant has a new name. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a whole what did you call it? A mythos? It's yeah, a whole, whole mythos <laughs> surrounding it. Yeah. That's right. The big Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice. great. We'll call this the revelry. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Uh, AKA Careless Whisper. There you go. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's all coming together. So what happened after college? 
What was your next steps? How'd you get into uh, uh First, I went into porn. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. <You're> like, <laughs> Christian evangelical. Yeah. You know what? I'm Let's tired of flip this. Flop. Let's do the other side. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, go all the way, the way that they said I couldn't before. Mm-hmm. You know, um, let's see what this is all about. And it was exactly. It was, exactly. It was no longer <laughs> come, Jesus, come. It was <laughs> something else. Entirely. Jesus, I'm coming. <laughs> That's right. I'm coming back. Coming you know, back. Coming back. Wait for me. <laughs> Wait. Don't wait go. Me. So, post college, how many bands were you in? Um. Uh, right? I was, was that one of the questions? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. I think Brian asked it better. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> oh, I, I, I guess, got it. I guess I should clarify. I didn't no, actually fine. do porn. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I could never we'll like, cut that. That's yeah. No. Uh, so I've only really been part of bands with my, my brothers, uh, one with both of my brothers, and then one with just my older brother. Um, do you guys know Daniel John Roberts by any chance? He plays a lot of different things. DJR? Stuff. DJR, yeah. Oh. No, I'm just familiar <laughs> with LJR. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we we played in a band called Band of Brothers, which is all three of us, and that that is on Spotify. There's a very like old album. You can see a very young version of me, uh, my younger brother Michael. He has red hair, and he was the bass player in the band. And we wrote a lot of songs that are more. That were, it's not like a it's not like Christian music, but it's definitely sort of like. Christians in a band. You know, the whole thing like, oh, we're not a Christian band, but we're Jars Christians in a band. Yeah, yeah. kind of like George Clay, yeah. Switchfoot. Uh, we, we, we weren't like super overt about it at all. And we weren't trying to convert people either. We we're just trying to be, you know, just honest about life stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we did that for a while. And then me and my older brother did like a duo thing where we looped like a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was interesting. I definitely wasn't, I wasn't like fully committed to music at this point. And so... It wasn't really the right uh, time for that. And we, you know, you we were had... going to be a mechanical engineer. Exactly. Yeah. I was at Maryland working on these robotic birds um, that we made like fly around by you mean, themselves. You mean just birds. Pigeons. They do. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> birds aren't real. That's right. <laughs> That's right, Matt. <laughs> I knew it. I'm part of that Facebook group. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, I've I seen know the diagrams. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Shelly's crying right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, you know, that that was where, where I was going at the time. And I did, I mean, I didn't really know what I wanted to do at all. I was really just kind of going off of what my parents were pushing me to do and what somewhat of what my older brother Daniel was pushing for, which is more music stuff as well. And he ended up being right that that was really what I wanted to do in the end. But I had to kind of take my own time to figure that out. And I ended up uh, quitting grad school after four years, had a couple like journal papers published and stuff like that. I was actually, I should have been done with my PhD by that point, but um, I sometimes that's how it is. Yeah. And like, I just didn't push myself enough and I could have finished in like one more year, but I, I realized at that point, like I needed to stop trying to create as many opportunities for myself and start actually choosing something. Mm-hmm. And that meant making intentional sacrifices for things that mattered by sacrificing things that had value and a lot of great value. So I decided I needed to like quit and figure out what I wanted to do. And there was a podcast I loved at the time called the strategic entrepreneur. And they had this whole thing. There was like, they'd start in the podcast and they'd say, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive because what the world needs is more people who have come alive. Mm. And that was really powerful. And I was like, well, that's for me, that's making art. It's empowering people and building meaningful relationships. So whatever I did with my life, I wanted to, to be one of those three things, but it fit in those categories. So music was my main art form, turned into also video over time as I felt like I needed to do cooler videos for my YouTube channel and stuff like that to stand out and become famous, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, then that turned into a you know, little video production company and just I fell in love with the art of it and it just happened to be kind of the right thing, you know, long term. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the programs and stuff that you use? I just use Adobe Premiere Pro mm-hmm. right now. Um, DaVinci Resolve, I, I'm sure, is better, honestly. Uh, I just never converted over, at least haven't yet. So the, is the DaVinci thing just because you don't want to learn a whole other set of shortcuts or what? Yeah, it's mostly just since it's worked for me so far, and I have really strong workflows that like, I just am really fast at the editing now for what I need to do. It's just annoying to go in and like learn something else. Sure. We have this Amplify event series where right. I every, see you kind of do that. It's like almost once a quarter or something like that. Yeah, every month actually. Oh, and we're starting okay. to like add in more um, locations 
every month. Like we were doing, we do one every month in Maryland and then we started doing one like every other month in Virginia. And now we're starting to move that to every month as well. Okay. What if, um, what if we took like a show where you have five bands that come in, they have 45 minute slots and they each perform and it's cool, but we make it a video shoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then because we have a lot of bands, we can charge them a lot less, but we still make a good day rate. Yeah. Um, and so that's how that kind of ended up working out. And so we do, and because they're all one takes, it's quick, you know, editing. It takes me less than an hour to edit all the videos, you know, from the day. Uh, but we can do really well uh, with that and still give people like crazy low rates. And the rates include studio quality audio and all mm -hmm. that stuff. We schedule everything. So it's nice and easy. I mean, you've written some really great original songs so far. Like, I can't say, uh, more time, um, insecure. Thanks, man. Um, so what, what's kind of been like one of your favorites that you've written so far? I know you're working on some new stuff, but as of today, what's kind of your favorite that you've recorded? Yeah. Um, my favorite of the ones that are out so far, I think, is Insecure. Mm -hmm. I really like, I really love the percussive aspect to that. Um, and there's parts in there like the like, I really love the way that the harmonies work in the chorus, and I like the like way that the pre-chorus is like a three-four, you know, thing that doesn't really feel like it's three-four. It just feels like it just feels right, but it's like this off-tempo or this off-beat, you know, kind of thing. Um, and then that was, and, and it brings in some of my favorite artists because, like, that one's very influenced by Steve Winwood with some of the like percussive stuff. Yeah. And then Toto is the main influence for like the chorus, and especially the chorus harmonies, mm -hmm. and also the the pre-chorus part where it's like the dun 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 because that's like dun 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 dun. Yeah, like that's where I got that from. I was like yeah. trying to just mess with that, come up with a different way of you know syncopating things to make mm -hmm. it fresh and new, but still kind of connect with that. Yeah, Isn't that um, fun when you get to do that. Oh my it god, it just like comes to you. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, cool. dude, it is great. And then, like, the, and then the bridge is probably my favorite part because it just has these great, like, Toto type um, chord progressions and with a ripping guitar solo that mm -hmm. my brother did. Um, my brother's just so good at guitar. Very it's cool. Very it's nice. also nice to know people that can do stuff like that. Yeah. It's this or that. This or that. I love these. This or that. It was a different version of this yeah. or that. Yeah. Interesting. Like I, you I, changed it up. You did some flip. I added the Shelly bit because Shelly was like, I love this. And I was like, it's going or to that. Go. Well, yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. So now so it's time for this or that. We're jumping right into it. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to preface. I'm sitting right into it. I'm going to preface this particular uh, this or that because we've been calling you Luke. This mm, whole time. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But as you have kind of branded yourself, you're LJR, LJR Creative, LJR. And LJR are the initials of your full name. Yeah. I'm, yep. I'm well, assuming. as your Vox was taken, so as you your come up with something. That is cool. <laughs> so tonight's This or That is themed to the LJR. Ooh. All right. All right. All right. All right. You ready? Off My the top. Body is ready. <laughs> but my heart is not. <laughs> my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. <laughs> so off the top, we got PB and J or BLT. Oh, uh, BLT for sure. I've really? always hated PB and J. Is it the bacon? It's the jelly. Oh, the, the, the it's the jelly that I hate, but yeah. it's the bacon I love. Yeah, for sure. Oh, look Aww. at that. That was just for you. He looked at you when he said look at that. Us. Look at us. Who would have thought? <laughs> T-I, um, T-I or B-I-G? Those, those are oh. rap artists. We got <laughs> T-I, no, yeah. like, so T-I, T-I-P, uh, yeah, or, or Notorious B-I-G. Um, I will be honest, I couldn't tell you a song by either one of them. Maybe Even though I'm you sure can I've have heard whatever them. whatever you like, yeah, that's T-I. And then B, oh, well, okay. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure I probably know one by Notorious B-I-G. All right, I'll, I'll come back to artists. How about uh, like Kim Kardashian? ASCAP or BMI? Oh, ASCAP for sure. Yeah. yeah. I think I did ASCAP too when I was registering songs. Yeah, no cap, ASCAP. No cap, ASCAP. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, part, and part of the thing that's cool about ASCAP is that they have their little on stage thing. 
Like you that? could. So if you if you perform your own songs live, oh, original songs, oh, yeah. you should get paid for the performance royalties, right? Out of the licensing that the venue pays yeah. to ASCAP to be able to have songs perform there. Nice. But you have to report your set lists to them in order to get paid. Do you just send them an email, or I guess there's a little they, button on ASCAP. You log in, and there's it just says on stage. You click that, and you upload your set lists. Um, and you do it every time, and you can only do it for like the past nine months, and then like forward. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah, I haven't fully explored the website. There's a lot of stuff on there. Yeah. But yeah, I I weighed my options. And I think there were two others that I was looking at, but it seemed like ASCAP for me was the way to go. Yeah. Sweet. Um, all right. So I'm back to artists. Uh SRV, Stevie Ray Vaughn. Yep, know that one. All right. Or BB Walk King. The type Ooh, uh yeah, SRV. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not that I don't like BB King. Um, I especially like the what he did with U2. Um, that was Really, really sweet. It was one of my favorite, one of my favorite songs growing up. Um, but Stevie Ray Vaughan is probably my number one. Walk on the tightrope. Yeah, but yeah I great. still. Can... We watched that Austin City Limits concert so many times in my house. He's so good. Yeah, and it come to think, uh, come to think, <laughs> it's funny to think that he would play certain venues where people just didn't give a shit at all about what he was doing. And he would just get so frustrated and be like, all right, fuck this, I'm out. It's like, how could you not be entertained right. by how talented this this individual is? Are you not entertained? Exactly. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, we're going to civil. Fuck this shit, I'm out. <laughs> fuck this shit, I'm out. Okay. Where's your app? Where's your app? <laughs> I feel like there are a few applications in there for that song. That, that's right, totally. All right, we're going for civil rights. MLK or MILK? <laughs> You could just, I can't say. Civil rights or uh, dairy? Which is it? <laughs> um, Don't choose dairy. If, if it's Brian, he cannot choose M I L K. Well, so. Is this the milk versus so milk? Is, Hob, no, I'm Javi Milk. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. So, civil rights, gay rights. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. No, so it, you don't have to choose. Yeah, I guess you don't I mean, have to choose. Maybe both. I mean, I'm a big dreamer, so I guess I guess MLK. I have a dream. Okay, that one day I dig it. That one day, milk will wake up and this will be, be a dream. lactose <laughs> free. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys. Uh, we're going to actors. Okay, RDJ, Robert Downey Jr. Oh, there it is. Yeah, or J.K. Simmons. He was in uh, Whiplash. Oh, he's he's a bunch in. of stuff. I think, I, yeah, this is the guy. He played in that TV show. Um, didn't he play Jonah? He was in, in Oz. As well? yeah. He plays he Jonah. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Was in Oz. Yeah. He played oh, Jonah. He yeah. Yep. Um, you know, honestly, Jonah. I think it, it's... Uh, Jameson. <laughs> it's, yeah. um, I think it's going to have to be our RDJ. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. yeah. Iron Man, yeah. who is now going to be the new Doctor perhaps, Doom. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. Doctor Doom. Yeah. yeah, Doctor Doom. All right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, GMC or BMW? Uh, BMW. Yeah. Not that I've ever Good owned call. either car, but oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bacone drives a BMW. Uh, uh, BMW. What? Uh, so actually, that was one of the questions I was going to ask earlier. Is when you're driving out to a gig or when you're setting up for these things, what what's your mode of transportation? What do you drive? Ooh, that is a Toyota Rav Four. Nice, dark gray. Okay. Seats oh, go all yeah. the way down. 2021 <laughs> model. Seats go all the way down. I just got it. Oh, yeah. Back seat, <laughs> windows up. That's the way he likes to pack his gear for That's his That's right. Shows. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was great tag team. One, two, and three. Well done. Look Honestly, at that. that was growing up. I, you know, as a kid, you have all these wild thoughts of like how life is and what's important and blah 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 yeah Yeah, man and growing up i thought subarus and the rav4 were the top two like all-terrain vehicles and so i loved rav4s for so long Mm. testify yeah okay thanks (laughs) are you with me (laughs) oh yeah are you with me take us to church all right um now this I'm going to go back to artists. Um, MGK, Machine Gun Kelly, Ooh. or TX2, 
Now, TX2, I don't, if you haven't heard of him, this doesn't yeah, really mean anything. Is, yeah. So he's another similar pop punk artist that I recently mm. was turned on to. Like today? Today. <laughs> <laughs> We're nothing if not relevant. <laughs> Tim sees through the veil. <laughs> but the veil has been torn. They're kind of similar. As it so, was. All right, we'll move on. Uh, NBA or NFL? Oh, NFL. I mean, I don't really care about either one is the real truth. But I enjoy NFL more than NBA. Yeah. You said it in the microphone, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, saved forever. It's still recording, right? <laughs> yeah, we're still going. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I, I've lo- I love playing football. I mean, not that I really do it much anymore. I love playing basketball growing up. But I always just found watching sports to be so boring. <gasps> I just couldn't get into Unless it. you have good Dare seats. You. Huh? Unless you have good seats. Yeah, that could have been it. Like, I never really went to sports games growing up, you know. Yeah. Um, but even then, a lot later when I got to go to, like, Army versus Navy one time um, for a football game, there was just so much waiting around for something to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's just I think a lot of it can be, like, a maybe a family thing or a community thing, too. And my friends just weren't super into, like, sports and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it's the Christian homeschool thing. Who knows? Could uh, be. Yeah. I like to blame that when I have nowhere else to turn. <laughs> there you go. Same. Is there a sport that you enjoy the most out of all or no? Like watching or playing? Uh, well, maybe, you know, give me an example of both. Uh, watching probably soccer. Okay. Because things are always moving and happening. Um, and then playing probably ultimate Frisbee at this point, just because that's always moving and, and happening and stuff like that, too. Although recently the sport I actually play the most is disc golf. Yeah, dude, uh, we gotta go. Oh, dude, we should. I've play never golf. played. Golf. I want to. I want to. So fun. Fun. Oh yeah, dude, Woo! I've I've got a killer throw that I've been perfecting over the last few years. Oh, nice, uh, nice. Yeah. It's That's so much awesome. fun. I'm finally getting close to like hitting par most of the time. Yeah, which is like a huge accomplishment for me. What? Uh, where are there many places to play in Maryland? Yeah, or there's DC. Ton. Yeah. yeah. Uh, College Park has a pretty good, decent course. Okay, uh, it's not like amazing, but it's it's pretty good. Um, Patapsco State Park uh, has a couple. Okay, uh, McKeldin is like northern Patapsco, and it's got a great, great course. Um, and then there's a place at Capitol College. There's a place at my old church. There's my a old lot. church actually set up one. There's a place at Columbia. There, there, there's so many. There's way Dude, more than I like get I get up there. Yeah. I feel like there's one in Arlington, and there's one in northern. You do, know. do you use U Disc? I don't. Yeah, so can, UDisc is the app that shows you where all the courses are. Yeah. Okay. Just and it allows you to track all your stats so you can see how you did. Look at Google that. ain't got nothing on UDisc. Three yeah. more. I got three more. Okay. We're just, we're going to blow through them. All right. Ooh. I'm sorry, guys. I love it when you talk dirty. No, that was, no, no, was good. We loved I know it. it was good, but it was bad. <laughs> AT&T or VZW? AT&T Ooh. or Verizon? Oh, Verizon, yeah. yeah. It's too expensive. I'm probably going to switch to Mint Mobile, but I really want to keep my phone number, Ooh. so I haven't yet. You're going to Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Well, he's selling the company for like a yeah. billion dollars. I think so he already sold it. Or yeah, he's like just that. still in the ads. Yeah. The great ads, though. Yeah, Love that's that when you sell the company, you stay on as a consultant. Yeah, yeah. It's the best way to go. It's a lot of money. Yeah, I'll take it. Me All right, too. BOGO or BNPL? So buy one, get one, or buy now, pay later. Oh, buy one get one for sure. Yeah, because you want you always want to go either with a buddy or with your girlfriend, or with your invisible friend, and you, yeah, which is you basically. It's, and you have two for one. Now you have an extra seat on the plane. That's, that's, that's right. I feel like buy now pay later is a more like uh, you're you're gonna regret it more. Right, you're gonna buy, buy a lot more shit. Bogo, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's mm. options. Yeah. It's True. an option. Because the reality with Bogo is that it's really half off. Because you're typically not buying both for yourself, right. really. So you expect your friend to pay some for you or to get the next one. So it's really like half off, which is yeah. saving money. Yeah, Brian. Yeah. Or well, I, less, I mean, I they're just things to think about. <laughs> Gosh. And like if you're buy now, pay later, you buy something, you're like, oh, I wish I hadn't bought that piece of shit. Yeah. You know? As soon as you have to. And then you're like, you're like, ah, I really don't need this. And I got to pay for it now. And yeah. like everything is negative. You know? I but, and yeah, yeah. The, it's true. You know, the other scenario, you're like, wow, I'm so glad I have two of these pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Not exciting, but true. <laughs> uh, last one. This is it. The grand finale. All right. Are you an LOL kind of guy or an? R-O-T-F-L kind oh, of Oh, LOL. 
LOL. Yeah. Well, first off, like, let's be real. Both of those are like flat out lies every time. Yeah. If, yeah. if you're actually it's laughing just to make out me loud, feel good. Right. If yeah. you're actually laughing out loud, you're typing all caps. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Right. All right. Like if I'm actually laughing, you know, and even sometimes I type that and I'm not. I just thought it was really funny, but I'm not actually you're laughing. Like, that, that's mm. But I'm right literally there. never on the floor laughing. Rolling. At least not if I'm texting somebody. Yeah. I, I actually have done this before. There's footage of me rolling on the floor uncontrollably yeah rolling on the floor right. laughing like you're trying um, to put out a fire on your back <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> stop <laughs> drop and roll did yeah. you make a necklace about rolling on the floor laughing that I made might a, I made a necklace about his parents rolling <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> shit. Ah, they were doing more than laughing I'll tell you that's what that's right <laughs> uh, all right well I guess that uh, wraps things up well, Luke, thank you so much for jumping in on the podcast with us. Yeah, man. We had an you. amazing time. Yep. Same. I hope you come back. Oh, I'd love to. You want to come back? Yeah. yeah. Anytime. Sweet. Look I at appreciate us. you guys. Look Cheers. At us. Thank you so Cheers. much for having me. Thanks, Thanks for having Cheers. Ooh, baby. <laughs> and you know what? We got one thing left to do. Zach is this podcast was produced and engineered by Michael Bacon from Bacon Way Productions in cooperation with Revelry Media Productions. Video is provided by Brian Johnson. Please like and subscribe to stay up to date on our latest episodes. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at PodcastRNV and on TikTok at Podcast.NV. Send us your thoughts over email at feedback at podcastnv.com.